The Omen Transcend 14 is one of my personal favourite laptops. It was introduced last year as HP's Thin and Light Gaming laptop. They're competitor to the G14 and Blade 14. It's an incredibly premium laptop that looks stunning. It's an ideal choice for someone who wants a lot of portability, solid performance and doesn't want annoyances like lots of heat or fan noise because this one does run cooler and quieter than most laptops this size with this kind of hardware. However, last year's model it had one major downside. Its GPU was significantly underfed wattage, so much so it massively underperformed competitors with the same hardware. It was like you were paying for a 4070 but getting a 4060. Well, this year's model has a new Unleashed Performance mode and its GPU is fed 10 watts more. That combined with its more powerful and power efficient CPU and its new GPU, it should make this year's Transcend just much better. So with that said, let's see what it's like. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Ugreen. If you're unaware, Ugreen has entered the NAS space. We have their new 4-bay DXP 4800+. Ugreen's NAS it stands out in a number of ways. Firstly, it gives you more for your money. Where other NASs only give you 2.5 gigabit Ethernet speeds at this price point, Ugreen gives you 10, much faster. You also get a second Ethernet port that supports 2.5 gig, an SD card reader, an HDMI port, and an Intel processor with QuickSync. Secondly, you can use any brand of storage drive you want. Third, you can use the NVMe drives as actual storage volumes, not just for caching. Overall, I found the NAS very well built and easy to set up. It was more than fast enough for our video editing needs. It's a great solution for storing media locally so you can access it easily within your home or office. Click the link below for 25% off. Now, as most of the Transcend 14 is the same as last year, I'm just going to give you a quick recap of the laptop and then we'll dive straight into performance. The Transcend it stands out amongst 14 inch gaming laptops because it looks very stylish and understated. It feels very premium, I'd say on the same level as other premium laptops like the Zephyrus G14, Blade 14 and MacBook Pro 14. Maybe its deck flex is a little worse but that's about it. It's got a good OLED display that gets bright enough, has a very high resolution so everything looks nice and crisp and it refreshes at 120Hz. It can even drop right down to 48Hz to conserve battery. Its keyboard is a delight to type on and a standout of this laptop. The keys have this very satisfying click to them and the 4Zone RGB backlight it looks super cool. The areas around the keys they light up but not too much that it blinds you and distracts you from finding which key is which and that happens on cheaper laptops. It's got a good port selection placed in sensible locations and on ports another standout feature of this laptop is that it is fully charged with USB-C power. This is pretty unheard of for a laptop with such high performing components. But this is probably the reason for the Transcend's major con. To keep its power envelope within USB-C standards, its GPU is power limited. The older models with 40 series were limited to 65 watts max TGP and these newer ones can go up to 75. Just as a point of comparison, the 5070 laptop GPU can be fed up to 125 watts max TGP. That being said, this lower TGP of the Transcend has a fantastic side effect. The Transcend 14 feels much cooler to the touch in real world use and is much quieter than other 14 inch gaming laptops. So with that said, let's see how this year's model actually performs. We tested each of the various performance modes. When it comes to CPU performance specifically, there just isn't a difference between the top two performance modes, Unleashed and Performance. They both score around 1100 points in Cinebench, peaking at 80 watts and drawing 65 watts on average. The only difference is that on Unleash mode you get a tiny bit more fan noise so you really should be running on performance mode. Eco mode this year is much improved. The laptop's actually usable in that mode. Last year's Transcend 14 was so throttled in eco mode it made it absolutely unusable. Now let's take a look at how this laptop compares to other similar ones starting with Geekbench. This tests a variety of common performance tasks that you may actually do on your laptop. Here you can see that this new Transcend 14 with Intel's Arrow Lake H performs very well, quite similar to the Ryzen 9 HX370 in our Zephyrus G14 and much better than last year's Ultra 9 in our Predator 14. If you are considering a Transcend with the Ultra 7 Arrow Lake H processor, unfortunately guys we don't have one in yet. So we have added the ZenBook 14 as a proxy. Keep in mind the ZenBook 14 only feeds its processor a max of 60 watts, so it will likely perform better in the Transcend. We believe HP will feed the Ultra 7 80 watts the same as the Ultra 9 as that's what they did last year with their Meteor Lake Ultra 7. As you can see, none of these laptops come close to the performance of Apple's highest end M4 Pro chip in the MacBook Pro 14. 
Now moving over to Cinebench, which tests max CPU performance, we see this year's Transcend 14 with the Ultra 9 falling a bit behind AMD's Ryzen 9 HX370 processors, but once again beating them in single core. One thing I do want to reinforce is how dependent a processor's performance is on the power it's fed. The Predator Helios Neo 14, as I said, uses the Ultra 9 chip from last year, Meteor Lake, but it performs very similar to this year's Transcend, at least in multi-core. That's because that laptop is larger and is able to feed its processor more power. On PowerDraw, we are happy to see how well this Transcend performs given how little power it is fed, 9 watts less than our AMD Zephyrus G14. Let's now talk heat and fan noise for those using the laptop for heavy CPU tasks, coding for example. The Transcend 14 is one of the coolest filling laptops we've tested with a processor this powerful. Its fan noise is also not as loud as many competing laptops. If you're just doing light tasks on this laptop like taking notes in class, the laptop feels incredibly cool to the touch, but the fans they're always on. They aren't loud nor high pitched, but if you listen closely in a quiet room, sure you'll hear them. One thing Sierra did point out was that on performance mode, the laptop's fan noise was very quiet, when just doing light tasks that is. So you may be able to just leave this laptop in performance mode and just let it decide how fast it needs to spin its fans. I really like laptops that do this. In 2025, I don't think we should have to go in and change performance modes all the time. Apple has had one performance mode for years. Switching over to GPU performance, we tested all modes on TimeSpy, the quintessential gaming benchmark. In Unleash mode, even with the fan set to max, we really weren't able to eke out that much more performance. This is really odd as the CPU and GPU do draw more power on that mode. So on the surface, it looks like Unleash mode just isn't worth it, as performance is the same, but fan noise is noticeably louder. We wanted to investigate this further, so we tried Cyberpunk on Ultra, again not a big boost moving to Unleash mode. So for most of you we strongly recommend you stick to performance mode. But since gamers they do tend to like the best possible performance results of their laptop, the following graphs are all tested using Unleash mode. Compared with other similar laptops, the Omen Transcend 14 is about 15% faster than last year's Transcend 14 with a 4070. We didn't get that laptop in, so we've used our friend Matt Monus's Time Spy score here. I must say, given the more powerful CPU, more powerful GPU, and higher wattage, I was hoping for a tad more. To highlight how much GPU wattage matters in gaming performance, the Predator Helios Neo 14 from last year with its high wattage 4070 beats out this Omen Transcend. Switching over to Port Royal, a ray tracing benchmark, here the Transcend 14, it barely beats out the high wattage Predator with its 4070. You can see though that both these laptops are way behind our 5070 Ti laptops. It will be interesting to see how a laptop 5070 is supposed to perform when we get a higher wattage one in. In fact, we just got in the Strix G16 with a 5070, so get subscribed with the notification bell on for that. In Wildlife Extreme, which we used to show how these laptops compare to Apple's MacBooks, here we see the Transcend 14 perform similar to a MacBook Pro 14, that's with Apple's highest end M4 Pro chip. Now let's take a look at some gaming benchmarks, starting with Cyberpunk with DLSS frame generation off. The Omen performs pretty well here, beating out the larger Zephyrus G16 from last year with its 4080 in 1% lows and close to it in average frames. That isn't a full wattage 4080 though, but this is still an impressive result, as Cyberpunk is certainly playable at ultra settings at high resolution on this laptop. When we turn on DLSS frame generation on, we see the Omen do very well, particularly in 1% lows. Now let's take a look at Monster Hunter Wilds. This is a really good example of a modern game that needs more than 8GB of VRAM. It even gives you a warning when you run the game on this laptop at ultra settings. Here you can clearly see how nuked the 1% lows are on our 8GB of VRAM 5070 and the 4070 in the Predator. In complex game scenes for a graphically intensive title like this one, 8GB of VRAM it's just not enough. Take a look at how much better the 4080 performs which has 12GB of VRAM. Next, Forza Horizon 5. Here this laptop's performance is disappointing. The Omen is behind the Predator Helios Neo 14 and the Zephyrus G16 with their 4070s. As I said, those do feed their 4070s more wattage. Lastly, Final Fantasy Dawn Trail. Here this laptop performs slightly better than those high wattage 4070 laptops that I just mentioned. During gaming, the Transcend 14 felt lightly warm to the touch. Fan noise appears loud, but as I said, this is using Unleashed mode. In our testing, we found you lose around 1-6% to in performance if you drop down to the quieter performance mode. I edited two videos on this laptop, and I have to say, it edited really well. The videos I tried were medium complexity in terms of the kind of videos that we produce here, but it was a good experience. The laptop did get a bit warm, as we said, but that's to be expected for such a small laptop. 
Heck, even the MacBook Pro 14, it gets warm editing these kind of videos. I did notice something during editing though that I didn't like. You do feel some vibrations coming through the keyboard deck on the left side. I checked during gaming and the same occurs, and I can confirm it happens on our older 4060 model. Look, the vibrations, they're subtle. Ethan took a transcend away with him for a week to game on, and he didn't notice them at all. But if you're sensitive to something like that, this may get under your skin. Back on video editing, here are our Puget Premier benchmark results. It backs up what I said. The laptop performs very well. You can see it smashes Apple's MacBook Pro 14 with their highest-end M4 Pro chip. Switching to DaVinci Resolve, it again does well, but this time the MacBook beats it. All right, performance testing done. Let's now talk battery life. It is terrible. There really must be something wrong here. We're getting around three hours on battery, and that's for something as simple as playing a downloaded movie on repeat with the brightness dimmed or doing office productivity. We ran these tests multiple times, same results. I believe this is just a bug that HP needs to resolve with a BIOS update because I felt the laptop while it was running our battery tests. It felt very warm underneath. It was like it was running the dedicated GPU or running the CPU too much. Even even though we'd specifically told it to run in iGPU only mode and put the CPU in eco mode. Something just has to be off here. This laptop should really feel cool to the touch for tasks like these. Our new Omen also appears to have a lower charge capacity than last year's model. Look, given the more power efficient components in this year's model, it really should last at least as long as last year's model. As I said, something must be wrong here. Now, if you do want to run high performance tasks while on battery, which you really shouldn't do, its performance does drop a bit, so keep that in mind. I'm now going to finish off with a couple more observations. Firstly, last year's Omen wouldn't run at its full performance when charged from the USB-C port on the left side. You could only use this when you were charging from the back port. This year's Omen has resolved that issue. You can use either USB-C ports. On the note of charging, I would have loved to see Thunderbolt 5 in this laptop, as that does support high wattage power delivery, and would have probably let HP raise that GPU power limit. Next, Wi-Fi has been downgraded from Wi-Fi 7 in last year's to Wi-Fi 6E in this year's. No joke. We checked this multiple times. Perhaps this is because Best Buy just wanted the cheaper Wi-Fi 6E in the model that they are selling. Hopefully, HP will offer Wi-Fi 7 in units bought directly from them. Next, the mechanical trackpad, which feels a little cheap on a laptop as premium as this, it still hasn't been upgraded. Inside the laptop, it looks like nothing has changed this year, I bet you can't even tell which one is which. The only part that seems easy to access and replace is the SSD. What I will say though was that the new one was much easier to take the back off versus the old one, which was clipped in super tight. To test Linux, we booted up Fedora 42, and everything worked other than the sound. That's the brightness up and down, the trackpad, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the camera, you guys get the picture. Here's the webcam of the Omen Transcend 14 from last year. What do you think of the quality? Take a good look. Now here I am on the new Transcend 14. To my eyes, it looks a bit better, even though it's still a 1080 one. By the way, I am using studio light, so this could be considered the best possible lighting conditions. And now here's what I look like using the room's dimmer lighting. Let's wrap. Should you buy this year's HP Omen Transcend 14 with its better CPU and updated higher wattage GPU? Not if your primary goal is to game. In 2025, if you're spending upwards of $1,500 on a gaming laptop, you really should be buying one with a 5070 Ti. Those laptops are much more powerful, and the 5070 Ti has 12 gig of VRAM. Many modern titles need more than 8 gig. I have a video specifically on this topic, which I'll link below. The Predator Helios Neo 16S, that is our recommendation. It's clearly not as portable as this Omen, but it's pretty portable for a 16-inch gaming laptop, and that screen size will be far more immersive. So here's who we think should buy this year's Omen Transcend 14. If you're someone who values a really premium feeling laptop and you want solid performance with as little heat and fan noise as possible, this one is the one to get. Just be aware of its trade-offs. For that more comfortable experience, you're getting a poorer performing GPU as it's underfed wattage. In some games, you'll probably want to dial down the settings a bit. Now, if you're a programmer who wants to do some gaming in your downtime, you'll definitely like this laptop for its comfortable keyboard, great display, and solid CPU performance. Also, if you're looking to do some video editing, this one does very well at that. The Transcend's main other downsides are that right now, its battery life sucks, which we believe is probably fixable. Hopefully, HP does release an update to solve this. If they do, I'll put a comment down below. Also, the left side keys, they do vibrate slightly when you're running the laptop at max, and the Transcend's trackpad feels a little cheap for such a nice device. Well, 
That's all I got for you. If you're shopping for a laptop right now, make sure to check out our website, bestlaptop.deals. Over there, you'll find all the laptops that we recommend for different types of buyers. We have a price tracker and call out when the laptop's price makes it a good deal or a great one. We even just launched custom price drop notifications, so give that a go. Finally, we really want to make it to 400k subscribers this year. If you can give us a little hand and click that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. Well, would you buy this Omen Transcend 14? And if not, what would you buy instead? Let me know with a comment down below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.